Bayerische Motor in Werken, or BMW as we all know it, is a brand which many of us hold close to our hearts. For years it's been one of the marks synonymous with driver focus and performance. I think many of us will agree that the engine is an integral part to the motor vehicle and also the driving experience overall. BMW have had many great engines over their time. The M20 straight six used across the 1980s and 1990s was a silky smooth unit offering modest performance figures but indeed a great sound. Then came the 2000s and things really stepped up fast. The S54 was introduced for the E46 M3 offering 343 horsepower, an 8000 RPM rev limit and some of the best induction noise you'll ever hear in a road car. A few years later we saw the mighty S85 appear in the E60 M5, possibly one of the craziest cars to come from that era. A 5 litre naturally aspirated V10 making over 500 horsepower and yet mounted inside the body of a 4 door 5 series BMW. But today, I'm not actually going to be talking about M engines at all. I'm going to be talking about the N52 B30. You can see here, I've got my 2008 BMW Z4 Coupe with the bonnet open showing that N52 B30. And some of you may know, but this is actually a three litre naturally aspirated straight six. One of BMW's kind of last of the line straight six petrol engines, if you like. As we know, BMW have a long history with this type of engine. And for me, I think it might just be one of their greatest. If you are enjoying the video so far, please do consider hitting that subscribe button and dropping us a like, it would help out massively and we hugely appreciate the support. So I suppose for this, what we've got to consider is what makes a great engine. I think there's many factors to this and ultimately a lot of these are going to be subjective, but to me breadth of capability is one of the key features, at least for a road car. And this N52 certainly delivers on all of those. Amazingly, peak torque comes in at just 2,750 RPM, and that's 232 foot-pounds. See, these are certainly pretty modest figures, but what you've got to remember in a car like this, which doesn't weigh that much, power goes quite a long way. So that torque is available for much of the rev range, and then peak power comes in at 6,600 RPM, all 265 horsepower of it, but again, fairly modest figures, especially by today's standards. But this versatility, this sort of breadth of capability that I talk about is really made possible by the use of double Vanos and Valve Tronic. Okay, so what is double Vanos then? Well, effectively, this is variable valve timing and double just means it's on the intake and exhaust camshafts. And what this does is it improves the efficiency of the engine by just allowing the engine to breathe better. Valvetronic is essentially variable valve lift. You can think of this a bit more like VTEC in the Honda engines. And it basically just allows the actual lift of the valve, how much it opens and closes, to be accentuated, to make it open and close more or less, depending on the point in the rev range and what you're demanding from the engine. And I just find this power so usable, to be honest. It's a really nice amount. You can deploy it basically everywhere and not really have to worry too much about traction issues and you know whether you're gonna be able to get out of the corner without going fully sideways. But yeah, this is what the N52 is about. It's, it's, a daily, it's a daily engine, it's a road engine. This isn't a race engine. But it just has these sort of two very distinct sides to it. Below 3000 RPM, it's a very subdued engine. It's very quiet, but it still offers the torque that you need given what I was saying earlier. However, take it above 3000 RPM and it just totally changes. The red line on this car and the rev limiter is at 7000 RPM. So it's starting to go into that kind of M engine sort of territory, if you like, the way it revs out. And it's pulling, of course, right up to the top with that peak power coming in at 6600 RPM. Now, 
Now in the Z4s specifically, you have a sound generator pipe, which essentially just feeds induction noise into the cabin. It's a brilliant idea if you ask me, and I wish manufacturers would do that today, but you know, it, what it does is just fills this cabin with induction noise, kind of all the way through the rev range, especially when you're at full throttle. It's really, really great, and it just makes it such a rewarding engine as well, because the, the way it sort of develops sound changes dramatically throughout the rev range, and having that sound fully in the cabin means you can really appreciate it. So the N52B30 has an 85mm bore and 88mm stroke. Now you don't need to worry too much about those figures, but specifically the stroke being a higher measurement than the bore effectively means you have leverage on the crankshaft which helps to develop more torque, and that's really what you feel with this engine. What you've got to think with a lot of these older M engines is they're designed to rev high. They don't develop tons of torque down low, which kind of affects their usability on a daily basis but they deliver so much more in the high end. You know, you've got to think of the likes of that S54 revving to 8,000 RPM. Just all the mechanics that need to go right for an engine to be able to do that time and time again. It's really pretty astounding. But the N52 kind of offers that bit of compromise, I suppose. It doesn't rev quite as high as the M engines, but it offers so much still. And also with the absence of these M taxes that we're seeing on the likes of the S54 and S85 with rod bearing issues and Vanos issues, the N52 is something that you can really use day after day and not have to worry about it totally emptying your wallet at any given point in time. I'm not trying to throw any shade at those M engines, of course, I appreciate those just as much as anyone else, but it's just nice sometimes to appreciate the lesser engines that BMW came up with and that unfortunately we just don't see around too much today. So I think it's fair to say the N52 engine certainly offers everything I would want from a BMW naturally aspirated straight six engine. I'd love to know if you've also experienced the N52, and if you have, please do let me know your thoughts on it in the comments section below. Anyway, that's all from me for this video. I'll see you in the next one.